this is a, a PSA where I'm gonna let you know that I like, don't like summer and the more summer continues the more I'm convinced that summer is from the pit of hell so just wanted to give you an update on that let's continue with the video I can't even lie to you I just finished Parks and Rec the entire show and I'm really sad right now and that's why I put on this dark lip and I'm really feeling the summertime sadness really really just come through right now so just like give me a second as I mourn the end of a great show okay hi welcome to Gab and Gabs uh, today we're here with a book haul. If you have been on my channel before, you know that I do seasonal book hauls. So I do one for the entirety of summer, spring, what if fall, fall, wall, fall, wall. <laughs> um, I do them seasonally. Uh, the smallest one I did was for fall. I think it only had like three books. But here, this is going to be a spring haul, but it's going to be a spring with the beginning of summer. And in spring, it was my birthday, plus you know quarantine and then some lovely people have sent me some books so i wanted to include them in here and uh yeah uh we have a lot of books to get through so i'm just gonna continue and just start continue i can't continue if i didn't start that's just a fact there okay so we're gonna start with my birthday books now for my birthday my lovely significant other uh bought me a lot of books that I wanted so we're gonna start with those books and then we'll just then we'll just go we'll see where the flow takes us I think I've already mentioned it in my previous video aka the video where the sound cut off like midway through and I didn't catch it <laughs> hopefully it doesn't happen this time I'm gonna double check I'm gonna double check my work you know it was like you know when you turn your homework and you don't double check you just like throw things together and you're like it'll do that's kind of what happened in the last video, but it's okay. Uh, so the first books that I got were the Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Leigh Bardugo. I wanted these books in particular because the show is coming out, I believe, the end of the year, maybe the beginning of 2021. So I'm one of those people that never read the books when they first came out or were first popular. As I said before, I started back into reading the end of 2018, so I missed many years of like, all the YA popular books so now I'm kind of going back and rereading some popular ones plus fantasy is really hard for me but I figured a good place to start is YA it's a little bit easier um, but I've already read Shadow and Bone which is the first book and I really enjoyed it I thought it was an easy book it was fun to get through um, enjoyed it I mean I kind of like Mal the Darkling is like I'm into him but also I'm not into him at the same time Alina's Alina <laughs> But if you don't know, this is a book about a girl named Melina, and she is a Sun Summoner, which is a crazy cool power that no one has. And the Darkling, which is this mystical figure, takes her away to this palace where they train the Grisha, which are people with powers. And together they're supposed to defeat this thing called the Fold. And that's all I'll say if you haven't uh, read the series. So Shadow and Bone was the first one. The second one, Siege and Storm. This is the book I'm currently reading. I'm on page, I don't know. What page am I? Wait. Oh, I'm shook. I lost my bookmark. Who knows? I could be on page two for all I know. No, I'm not on page two, but like I just, I lost my bookmark and I'm shook, but I've, I'm halfway in here. I marked it in Goodreads, so I should know where I'm at. Um, I'm on Siege and Storm, and then I also got Ruin and Rising, so this is the third and final book in the trilogy. So excited to read these because I want to see what all the hype's about. So far, I will say, I really like Shadow and Bone, but Siege and Storm, I'm having trouble getting into. I'm, I'm hitting a slump in it, so I'm not sure if it's just me or if it's just the book. But Siege and Storm isn't my favorite compared to Shadow and Bone, so yeah, really like those. And another fantasy that I asked for is the His Dark Materials uh, trilogy. 
I never read these as a child, but I did watch the movie The Golden Compass with Nicole Kidman, and I liked it. But HBO recently made it into a series, and I watched it, and blown away. One of my favorite shows. I Obviously, it came out last year, but so far that I've seen in 2020, it's one of my favorite uh, new shows. If you don't know, uh, it comes with three. It comes. Well, technically, I did get the box set, so it comes with. But it's a book of three. So the first one is The Golden Compass. The second is The Subtle Knife. And the third is The Amber Spyglass. This one's kind of thick. As you can see, it's like all just dark materials. Uh, the synopsis of this is kind of hard to explain, but it's a fantasy series about a young girl named Lyra who lives in a college. And there's these things called the daemons. And each child and each adult has one and her uncle comes and visits her at this college but he's looking for this thing called dust and she kind of gets kind of whisked away on that adventure about that i won't say too much more i think it's better if you go in dark and it's kind of complicated to explain but i love the show so much so if you have a hard time with fantasy like me and you probably want to watch the show first it will help you segue into this i haven't started the book series first or at all because I want to finish Shadow and Bone first. I think trying to read two fantasy series at the same time is going to mess me up. So I want to completely finish that first before I dive into this world. But I'm so excited to read two more <laughs> for my birthday. So the next one is Catch and Kill, Lies, Spies, and Conspiracy to Protect Predators by Ronan Farrow. So if you don't know, Ronan Farrow is the journalist that kind of broke open the Harvey Weinstein um, sexual assault scandals that was going up throughout Hollywood um, so he kind of kind of instinct well obviously that story broke out into obviously a reckoning with the Me Too movement happening but this is his book and it kind of tells about how that all came to be him investigating this and how kind of scary it was for him uh, to do this and the threats that were against him and um, just other I think uh, I think he also delves deeper into some of the things he was investigating before. I think he also talked about Matt Lauer in this. Um, it's important when you support books like this because these kind of people should be exposed and should not be in any sort of power. And that's on that. Uh, but this is the hardcover edition. I think this was kind of sold out for a bit. But what I like about this, in controversial opinion, it has deckled edges. I like deckled, ed I like deckled edges. It reminds me of a series of unfortunate events if you read that series as a child. It gives me fond memories, so I was excited to see that this has deckled edges. I was excited that this had deckled edges. Uh, I can't wait to get into this. I know it's gonna be an obviously a heavier subject to read, so I'm just waiting for the right mental state to dive into this, but yes, this is it. Okay, and the last one from my significant other haul is Where the Crawdad Sings by Delia Owens. This book has been teasing me. You know when you like see a book around all the time and you're like, it's calling to you and you're like, no, like I need to save my coin. This has been that book. People in my life that don't normally read books at all have recommended me this book. They're like, oh, you haven't read that book? You haven't read that book? And I'm like, no, I have not read this book. And I kind of was like, I didn't want to read it because everyone kept recommending it to me. I don't know too much about this. I do know it's about a woman who lives in the marshes and someone turns out dead and the whole town thinks she's involved so they persecute her and I think it's in dual timelines from what I know. I could be completely off but I kind of want to go into this blind. Um, I've heard nothing but good things. It's obviously on Reese's book club pick but in addition I think it is going to be made into a film pretty soon so I want to get on it. I saw Emma Books talk about it and she really enjoyed it, but I just think that this sounds like my type of book. But I don't know about you, but do sometimes books just give you a vibe of like, I want to read this book in this particular season? This is giving me like end of summer vibes. I don't know if it's the cover, I don't know what about it, but I kind of would like to wait till the end of summer to pick this up and read. But uh, happy to finally have a copy and it will no longer call to me in the stores when I see it. So there we go, and also thank you to my person that bought me all those books. You're great, you're amazing. Okay, and then here are, these are here are. <laughs> the last two books here are ones that were gifted to me, um, not for my birthday, just gifted and were very nice. Um, the next one I'm actually really happy about. This one is Americana by 
Chimananda Ngozi Adiche. I hope I'm saying that right, and if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments and let me know. But this one has been on my radar. I didn't know about it until pretty recently, but the synopsis seems so intriguing to me. And as well, it's going to be a show on HBO Max with Lupita Nyong'o producing and starring in. So if that interests you at all. But this is about um, two people from Nigeria. One goes to London and one goes to the States and how they deal with racism in both uh, countries. But I just think it's I'm, I'm really intrigued. I, I find it interesting that it's in two different places and we're going to be following two different perspectives, but I've heard nothing but good things about this. My friend Megan, thank you if you happen to be watching this. She's in my real life, so I don't know if she's going to watch this video, but very nice of her to gift this to me. Also, it's one of my friend's favorite books of all time, so I definitely want to get to this one. So, Americana. I'm coming for you. This is the last gifted book, but also a wonderful surprise. <laughs> I've never been gifted a book before from BookTube. I've obviously, my personal life, yes, but not BookTube, but um, a very nice person who has a Twitter handle, Backless Books. I'll also put their YouTube below to thank you personally, but they sent me A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I have wanted to read this for the longest time, like the longest time. Uh, my mom actually watched the film a couple of years ago and she really liked it, but everyone seems to talk about this. I honestly, I can't tell you too much about it. All I know is that a monster comes and I think there's a kid involved. I don't know, but I know it has deep themes and such, but thank you. <laughs> All I can say is thank you. It really means a lot and I'm, I cherish this because I thank you. Thank you. Thank These you. These next books are legit all my doing. These are books I purchased for myself. One, I you know what, I started off slow. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna not pick up as much books. I have obviously a shelf of books I haven't got to yet. But then like, you know, quarantine happened, my birthday happened, and then like there were some good deals online and it is what it is. I don't regret anything, but here we go. Okay. The first, The Art of Racing in the Rain by Gar Stein. Let me tell you something. If you have HBO Max, I feel like I'm also a commercial for HBO Max at this point. If you have HBO Max, this movie is on there. Watch the movie. You're gonna feel every emotion you always wanted to feel. I really like this. I honestly picked up the book because I love the movie so much. This book is about a dog named Enzo and the book is from Enzo's perspective. His owner is a race car driver that dreams of being in Formula One racing and it just follows his life and kind of the choices that he makes and things that happen. But whew, what a fantastic film. It stars Milo Ventimiglia aka Jess from Gilmore Girls or Jack from This Is Us, two beautiful characters. But uh, it was on sale at Barnes and Noble and I just had to get it. I watching the movie I know what happens so I know it's gonna be like a like a you know I just kind of it's gonna get me and I need to be in a sort of mood you know like you know when you want a mood like I need to cry this is gonna be it and obviously I'm a, I'm a dog lover I have two dogs of my own so <sighs> but happy I don't know if this is on sale at your Barnes and Noble but if it is pick it up don't pick it up but yeah okay Next, I talked about this on my mid-year book freakout tag, but I'm so excited to get to this and now I finally can because I finished Parks and Rec today. <sighs> so close to being the shit y'all don't even know by Retta. This is her autobiography. I am so excited. I loved her on Parks and Rec. She was Donna. She was great. She was an icon, but obviously she's been on quite a other bit of show. She's a comedian, but I think her story is very interesting. She actually went to Duke University. She was in med school and then she decided to go to Hollywood. So I think she's going to have a really good perspective. Obviously she's funny, so it's going to be a more of a lighthearted memoir, but I'm interested to see how she made that pivot. I think it's interesting when I read 
these memoirs and I see when people make these huge life changes because for me I'm such a planner I'm someone that like likes to know what I'm doing all the time so for someone to be like I'm gonna be a doctor and then all of a sudden be like I'm gonna be a comedian and an actress in Hollywood that's two separate different things and how she was able to have the courage to do so I think this is gonna be a good read so excited to get to this I wanted to wait until I finish all of my parks and rec binge uh, the rewatch and now I have so now I feel like I can kind of like go over my sadness and, and read this book so <laughs> the next book is A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell if this sounds familiar this is the, the movie was made not too long ago with Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick uh, this book is about a woman named Emily who asked I think what's her name oh yeah who asked a fellow I don't know, mom, Stephanie, to watch her son, and then Emily never comes back and picks up her son. So it's kind of a mystery of like, what happened to Emily? And it's kind of a lot of twists and turns. It's it's a thriller, a domestic thriller is what they call, is what they call, is what they, who's they? I don't know, but it's a domestic thriller. So, yeah, if I'm in a mood for a domestic thriller, I've got one. I don't own too many, so this was also on sale in Barnes & Noble, so I decided to pick it up, so there we go. Okay, this one, I also talked about it in my tag that you couldn't hear. I'm going to keep saying that. I'm embarrassed, but, like, here we are. Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I've never read a romance book. I always have read books with romance in it, and I've always enjoyed having a romance aspect in books, but I've never decided or never have picked up an actual romance-centric all-romance book. But I think this is the one to start. The reviews for this are glowing. The sequel just came out and everyone seems to love it. So I think I'm in kind of the right hands here starting with this book. But if you're not sure what this book is about, it's about a girl named Chloe. <laughs> and she's kind of a book, or sorry, not book nerd. She's a computer geek. She's from a wealthy family, but she's kind of has these chronic illnesses that keep her wanting to be at home. She kind of, she has a life threatening accident that makes her kind of reevaluate her life and she decides to have a list of things she wants to accomplish in her life and she gets the help of this guy named Red to help her. Romance ensues. That's the romance part. That's when a romance ensues. That's what happens. That exact motion. It's kind of no surprise because I picked up Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Obviously I got six, the Six of Bones. Yes. You know what? To be honest, not far off. Um, since I got the trilogy, the television show is also going to have the Six of Crows duology immersed in the television show. So you kind of have to read the trilogy and the duology. So I decided, hey, I'm just going to pick this up for myself. This was a birthday present to myself. I was like, I'll just pick this up. So when I finish that, I can just go straight into this. Um, this one is not directly a sequel. It kind of has its own cast of characters, so you don't have to read the trilogy. But this is about a guy named Kaz Brecker, and he is pulling off a heist. It's kind of like an Ocean's Eleven, uh, but in a fantasy land. And I love Ocean's Eleven. When anyone asks me what my favorite films are, I always say Ocean's Eleven as like number two. So that's definitely up my alley. Okay, we're gonna keep going because there's still more books to go. I'm sorry, but also I hope I hope you're having fun. I hope you're eating a snack. I hope you're hydrating. I hope you're not sweating. I hope you're in AC. Because that's what I wish I was in right now. Okay. <laughs> the next one. Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. I have not read a Tiffany D. Jackson book yet, but I want to start with her first one. And first of all, the cover is absolutely gorgeous. I heard it described as a YA Gone Girl, which, okay. Uh, but if you don't know, this is a book about a young girl named Claudia, whose best friend is Monday. And all of a sudden, Monday doesn't come to school and no one seems to know where she's at and no one seems to care is the bigger problem here. So Claudia goes on the hunt to find her missing friend and she discovers something pretty horrendous in the midst of that. But wow, I've heard everyone that's read this has had glowing reviews. So I don't think I'm gonna be any different. I'm excited to read this. I keep, I'm excited about every book. I don't know why I keep saying excited, but yes, that one. Pumped, pumped. Another memoir, because I love a memoir. 
This one is From Scratch, A Memoir of Love, Sicily, and Finding Home by Tembi Locke. Ah, oh, man, the premise of this one is straight up my heart. Okay, so this book is about a woman who's black and a man who's Italian. They fall in love, um, but when they tell his Sicilian parents, they're not accepting due to her race. So they end up moving to Los Angeles, they adopt a daughter, but tragedy strikes and she is actually forced to go to Sicily and kind of work out that relationship with his parents. I feel like this one is necessary to read. I think learning about interracial love and just the hardship of falling for someone and not having the acceptance just due to the color of your skin is insane. But also we need to be reading from these perspectives. I want to get to this sooner rather than later. We're down to the last three. Can you believe it? We've made it. We've made it this far. Okay. The next is Where the Past Begins, a writer's memoir by Amy Tan. I love The Joylet Club. It's one of my favorite movies and books. Um, and this is the author of that book, but this is her memoir. This is her talking about her past with her parents and how difficult her upbringing was and her relationship with her parents. I always love memoirs because I love reading from different people's perspectives and I have a really close relationship with my family. So reading from someone that just doesn't necessarily have that and had a harder upbringing, um, how much she put of her own self into her writing and how the, her background has influenced how she writes. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. Okay, this one, I finally own this. I can't believe it, but it's The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Hunting this book down was hard recently, obviously, because I feel like everyone now wants to read it. I, being one of those people, I was also dumb and have waited this long to read this book. This book is about a girl named Star Carter who goes into a prep school in a white community but lives in the black community. She has an identity crisis about where she really belongs and how she can really be herself. And on top of that, she sees her best friend from childhood murdered by the police officer. So she decides to stand up and stick up for what's right and also finding her identity and finding her own voice very important read especially during this time a uh, movie was also made that you can watch on hbo max if you haven't i haven't i'm going to wait until i finish this book which i will be reading for the month of july for my uh book club but uh happy to own this sad and disappointed that i took this long to pick it up and read but can't wait to this month i just know it's going to be good okay and the last book is the night tiger by yang zi chu i picked this up Honestly, it's a cover buy. I think the cover is absolutely gorgeous and it's my favorite cover that I purchased this year. I don't know too much about the plot, but I know it's in 1930s Malaysia, which is absolutely intriguing to me. I've never read about that time period, so I think that's just gonna be, I've never read from it, so I would like to learn more about it. And this author is Malaysian herself, so uh, it's own voices, which I like to uh, support, so. If you've read this, let me know. I have, I've seen people haul the book, but haven't seen anyone actually read it. So if you've read it, know about it, please let me know in the comments. Let me know if I should pick this up pretty soon. And that's it. Those are all the books I have for you. I feel like I've been talking for at least an hour. Maybe it's only been 20 minutes. I don't know, but it's, it's long. There's a lots of good books. As you can tell, I've been doing a lot of buying, but also a lot of receiving. We love a receive, we love a give, we love a receive, and we love a give. Um, please open the description box because there's going to be things for you to like look at, things for you, to, some resources, but I'm going to keep doing that, like I said, until the end of time. So, um, I don't know. I guess subscribe if you want, like if you want, and um, I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, evening, brunch, and uh, my name is Gabby, it was nice to talk to you. I'll see you in the next video.